Okay, so this is an extremely annoying question for everybody involved. And I say that because if you don't have much of a biochemistry background, this is going to be extremely fucking confusing. And then for my angle as the tutor, this is challenging to explain concisely and in a way where I'm not confusing you even more, all right? So I'm going to do my best here. It is 3.43 a.m. Monday, February 15th here in Japan, and it is raining outside, very fucking loud. I hope my mic's not picking it up, so I apologize if it is, but we're just going to move through with this question here. So we've got an infant with some sort of enzyme def congenital enzyme deficiency. We can see he has hypoketotic hypoglycemia, okay, so decreased serum ketones, decreased serum glucose. That'll ring a bell for some students. We also see his decreased urinary ketones, increased urinary dicarboxylic acids. You're probably wondering what that means. Dicarboxylic acids just means there's a molecule with two carboxylic acid functional groups on it. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. It's just something we happen to see in this condition, all right? And then we have this very esoteric graph, this acyl carnitine profile, which I actually jacked this image off of some research article on Google, and then I altered it in my paintbrush program on MacBook Pro to prevent any type of copyright issues. But the point is, this is showing uh, a spike of C8 carnitine, which is a type of fatty acyl carnitine. So this is octanoyl carnitine. And then we have smaller amounts of C6 and C10 carnitines, which are hexanoyl uh, fatty acyl carnitine and uh, decanoyl fatty acyl carnitine, or just hexanoyl carnitine, decanoyl carnitine. Point being, these are medium chain length uh, fatty acyl carnitines, okay, which are going to build up in MCAD deficiency. Now, why do we get the hypoketotic hypoglycemia? I'm going to explain this, all right? So when we're breaking down fatty acids, the process entails the fatty acid moving from the cytosol into the mitochondrion. Now, the fatty acid cannot simply just transcytose the mitochondrial membranes. It needs to first approach the mitochondrion. It's converted via an enzyme into what's referred to as a fatty acyl-CoA. The fatty acyl-CoA then moves through the mitochondrial membranes via the carnitine shuttle. And then once in the mitochondria, once inside the mitochondrion, we have the fatty acyl-CoA that's then broken down via beta oxidation. Okay. Now, if we have medium chain acyl CoA dehydrogenase deficiency, we're not able to cleave these medium chain fatty acyl CoAs down via beta oxidation. Lots of enzymes in the beta oxidation pathway, but the point is we get a buildup of these fatty acyl carnitines. Okay. So a buildup of fatty acyl CoAs inside the mitochondrion, and of course, substrates will back up, and we get also a buildup of. Uh, medium chain fatty acyl carnitines, which is why they're elevated in the patient's serum. Now, we when we're breaking down fatty acids via beta oxidation, we are going to be lobbing off two carbon units called acetyl-CoAs. So if we have an eight carbon fatty acid, we're going to produce four acetyl-CoAs in the process. So acetyl-CoAs come together to start the process of ketogenesis. So two acetyl-CoAs come together, we make acetoacetyl-CoA, and then it's converted to other molecules, and then finally beta-hydroxybutyrate, uh, acetone, okay? And these are ketone bodies. So if we can't break down fatty acids, okay, because we have MCAD deficiency, then we're not going to be getting acetyl-CoAs, and then how could we therefore make ketones? We can't. That's why we get uh, hypoketosis, okay? So once again, I know this is going to sound very fucking confusing. I'm just doing the best I can here to stay concise. So that explains why we have decreased ketones. And then why do we get decreased glucose? Now, it's because acetyl-CoA is the positive allosteric regulator of a gluconeogenic enzyme called pyruvate carboxylase. So when we have pyruvate at the end of the glycolytic cycle, that can move into the Krebs cycle via pyruvate dehydrogenase, right? But pyruvate can't go back, can't go straight backwards to glucose because we have the irreversible enzyme pyruvate carboxylase 
uh, at the end of glycolysis that converts phosphorylenolpyruvate PEP into pyruvate. So pyruvate can't go backwards. That's an irreversible enzyme. So you say, well, how are we supposed to get back to glucose then if we're dealing with pyruvate? So pyruvate is converted via pyruvate carboxylase uh, into oxaloacetate in the TCA cycle. And then oxaloacetate can go backwards to uh, phosphorylenolpyruvate in the glycolytic cycle, and then PEP can go back up to glucose, okay? So that's what pyruvate carboxylase does. Now, uh, acetyl-CoA's are the positive allosteric regulator of that gluconeogenic enzyme, pyruvate carboxylase. So if we have decreased activation of pyruvate carboxylase, pyruvate can't go, can't go to oxaloacetate, therefore oxaloacetate can't go back up to PEP, and we get less glucose production. Very confusing, as I said, all right? But that explains why we have both decreased glucose and decreased ketones. We don't get activation of uh, pyruvate carboxylase because we're not making acetyl-CoAs, and we need the acetyl-CoAs to make ketones, okay? So we can also get LCAD deficiency. That's an answer on USMLE. But rather than getting these medium chain fatty acyl carnitine C6 through C8, we'd get a buildup, okay, 12 and higher. Um, patients can also, a carnitine deficiency is also another uh, diagnosis for USMLE. But if we had carnitine deficiency, we literally would not have any carnitine substrates, okay? So rather than getting uh, EG octanoyl carnitine, we would just get fatty acyl coas, for instance, but we wouldn't get any type of carnitine substrates in addition, all right? So Looking at some of the other answer choices here, acetyl-CoA carboxylase choice A, this is an important enzyme for fatty acid synthesis. So acetyl-CoA is converted to malonyl-CoA in fatty acid synthesis, and then the malonyl-CoA is just brought up to fatty acids. Now, so that's the wrong answer, of course. We already said this is MCAT deficiency, but uh, acetyl-CoA carboxylase, uh, when it makes malonyl-CoA, Malonyl-CoA is a negative allosteric regulator of the carnitine shuttle. So we just talked about how for fatty acid breakdown, we got to get that fatty acid from the cytosol into the mitochondrion, and it occurs via the carnitine shuttle. Well, that's inhibited by malonyl-CoA in the fatty acid synthesis pathway, which makes sense because if we're synthesizing fatty acids and we're producing malonyl-CoA, we'd, we'd want to shut off the fatty acid breakdown pathway, right? That makes sense. So malonyl-CoA produced by acetyl-CoA carboxylase is a negative allosteric regulator of the carnitine shuttle. And uh, acetyl-CoA carboxylase is biotin-dependent, vitamin B7. Propionyl-CoA carboxylase, also B7-dependent. The carboxylase enzyme is biotin-dependent. Propionyl-CoA carboxylase is important for the breakdown of odd-chain fatty acids. So I just said before that uh, we're lobbing off two carbon units when we break down fatty acids. So you have, if you have an eight carbon fatty acid, you make four acetyl coase. But what if you have an odd chain fatty acid? It is not the case that we are left with a one carbon terminal unit. We are left with three carbon terminal units called propionyl coase. So a propionyl coA via propionyl coA carboxylase and vitamin B7 becomes methylmalonyl coA. And then methylmalonyl coA via methylmalonyl coA mutase and vitamin B12 uh, cyanocobalamin becomes succinyl CoA in the TCA cycle. Okay, so that's where acetyl CoA carboxylase and propionyl carboxylase come into the picture. Hormone sensitive lipase, lipoprotein lipase, two important enzymes for USMLE. Hormone sensitive lipase is catabolic, it's upregulated by epinephrine, cortisol, glucagon. It's going to bring uh, triglycerides from the adipose site into the blood so that they can be used for energy. Now, uh, lipoprotein lipase is the opposite, it's activated by insulin. So you're going to be bringing the triglyceride, it's anabolic, so you're going to be bringing the triglyceride from the blood into the adipose site. I should just uh, be clear, uh, make a point of uh, clarification here, that both of these hormones, when they move the, the, the triglycerides uh, across the adipose site membrane, they're actually breaking down the TGA into three fatty acids and a monoacylglycerol, and then these molecules now that, they're, now that the TJ is broken down, these independent molecules can transcytose the vascular endothelium and the adipocyte membrane, okay? The TGA itself can't do that as bulky as it is. So uh, hormone sensitive lipase, as I just said, it's catabolic lipoprotein lipase, uh, is actually upregulated by fibrates, uh, fibrates like 
gemfibrozil, phenofibrate, uh, the upregulate lipoprotein lipase, the most important uh, agents for decreasing TGAs if you have TGAs greater than 500, and also uh, hypochylomicronemia, familial dyslipidemia type 1, is going to be a deficiency of lipoprotein lipase or, or apolipoprotein C2. So we get a buildup of chylomicrons, okay? Uh, well, I want to stay concise here. So once again, this is MCAD deficiency, and this is a beta oxidation problem, okay? And it's characterized by hypoketotic hypoglycemia. Uh, the patient will have a buildup of fatty acyl carnitines, uh, LCAD deficiency, okay? Uh, just you would have a greater length of your fatty acyl carnitines, and then near carnitine deficiency, you get fatty acyl CoA buildup, but you wouldn't get any type of carnitine substrate buildup. Okay, so look, that was my improvised articulation of this concept. Um, I did the best I, I could. I know that this is very confusing, all right? We could literally hop on the Skype, do a nice hour discussion of all this stuff to try to explain it the best uh, that I can, but uh, this um, is one biochemistry topic that needed to be discussed for USMLA, so I've at least made one question on it now. I'll obviously make more content, all right? So if you liked this, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.